Right, welcome back to problem 12 from Fundamentals of Chapter 2. All right, so in this one, basically what we've been doing, uh, I think the previous two problems were are harder than this one, actually. So if you want to pause and set it up yourselves, you go right ahead. I would encourage you to. Um, yeah, so let's, let's do this. We're trying to find the resultant, uh, yeah, the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force that's acting on this um, like uh, anchor, okay. So let's start with um, decomposing every force, okay. So you guys should be already sick of hearing that. Decompose your force. Decompose your force. All right, F one. That's this one. Um, so okay, they get they're very nice, and they gave us these perfect triangles here and then F2 is even easier let's actually let's do F2 first just pointing straight up so we know there's no X component and we know that it's just pointing straight up in the uh, uh, J direction okay let's go back to F1 so F1 is so it's pointing to the right and down so it should have a positive X component so it's gonna be 15 4 fifths yeah Pull up, not plus, minus 15, 3 fifths. Okay, J. All right, and now let's do F3. Oh man, my screen's being glitchy. It's not good. Watch it just break on me right now. All right, and then F3 is pointing up and to the right. So we know it's going to be 15. And what's that? 4 fifths. Right, we're getting the hang of this. Plus fifteen, and then remember three is parallel to the y, so three fifths j. Okay, and now what's my resultant force in the x? Oops, actually let's do some force in the x equals f r x. That'll be 15 divided by 3, 3, 4, so that's 12 plus 0 plus 12. 24 kilonewtons. And then f r y. I know you guys, if you guys have done the past few, like last three problems, you guys should be able to below past this problem. And then here we have minus 9 plus 20 plus 9 equals 20 kilonewtons. So let's see, these two, this force and this force pretty much canceled out the x components. Right? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The y components. Because one was pointing up, one was pointing down. Okay, and then we got our resultant uh, in the x and y as 24 and 20. So if we were to write this down, fr, it'll be 24i plus 20j. And then the, res the resultant magnitude, it'll be 24 squared plus 20 squared. Remember Pythagorean theorem? So let me just let me just draw that out real quick. Skip right ahead if you don't want to hear it again. But we have going back here, we have a vector FRX of 24 kilonewton magnitude plus vector FRY of 20 kilonewton magnitude. Let's say it's right here. Right? And then the resultant vector points in this direction. Okay, so the magnitude is, let's treat this as Pythagorean theorem, right? The magnitude's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So in order to solve c, you just do c equals square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? And if you want to solve for this angle, which we will be, you just take inverse tan of b over a, right? Because soka toa. Toa is tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Okay. So yeah, so let's let's go right there. 
So my magnitude is square root of 24 squared plus 20 squared. So that's roughly 31.2 kilonewtons. Always and also don't forget your 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 units, because professors like to you know kill you on that. Um, some exaggerate like what milligrams, newtons? Well, what what units? Seconds. Okay, and then theta, right? We said it's gonna be Sokotoa, so inverse tan opposite, which is B, which is our FRY, over adjacent, which is our X, FRX. And we get theta is about 350, 39.8, let's just say 40 degrees. <clears throat> okay, and that's it. So this, this one was actually easier than the last three that we've done, most likely. All right, there's no tricks to it. And measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and yeah, that's measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis because we visualized it here. If we would have had it like this, like if we just had FRX going this way, plus FRY going this way, and they would have given us this as 40, but because it's measured counterclockwise from the positive X axis, we would have had to add that 180 to get that full angle. Okay? Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Um, the next few videos that we'll be making, uh, so like problems 13 and up, it will be getting more complicated. We're going to go into 3D Cartesian vectors and all that. So should be fun. All right, guys. Thanks for your time. Uh, if you have comments, questions, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them and help you guys out. Peace.